Welcome, welcome, welcome to this new video. This time I want to talk to you about Greenbond OpenVast. And what is OpenVast? Uh, as you may or may not know, OpenVast is a full featured vulnerability scanner. I'm reading that right from the uh, website project. So um, it is an open source project that has been published for many years and it is included in many of the security distrust you can download to perform penetration testing such as Kali or Parrot. So in the past, I talked to you about doing vulnerability analysis and I showed you how to do it by visiting different websites that publish vulnerabilities so you can do your own research on that. Uh, one of them could be the uh, exploitable database. You go there and you'll be able to find uh, published exploits that could be used against a specific host. You can also go to the um, CVEs websites and search for CVEs to see if there's any published vulnerabilities. Or you can also run, and this is one of the videos that we did, uh, Nmap vulnerability scanning function. Uh, and if you remember or if you want to review that video, you'll see that it is not a pretty uh, thing to do, right? It's kind of messy and you, everything is command line. Of course, you can export that to a report, but it's not um, as useful. But again, it is useful if that's the only tool that you have. But if you have other options, find something that is easier for you to do. And that's where OpenVAS comes into play because it is a, a GUI based solution. There are some configuration that can be done on the command line, but it's GUI based. It's easier to manage, administer, and run these scans and get the results you need. So there are different ways how you can install OpenVAS. You can either download it from the official GitHub site and run it. And if you go there, you're going to see the uh, what you need and the installation. You can run it directly from your distrust. If you're using Kali or if you're using Parrot, you could do it from there as well. Or you can also download it as a Docker or a container in your operating systems. And that's what I'm going to do here. I want to do that in, in Ubuntu. As you could see here, I have a fresh new desktop installation of Ubuntu. And I want to show you how to download the Docker and run OpenVAS because you'll realize that it may be easier than doing it on yourself if you want to download it. And sometimes when you have all this distrust, you have all these problems with dependencies that don't run and you run into an issue. Anyway, so let's do this first on Ubuntu and then I'll show you how to access that in your uh, Parrot security. So the first thing that you would like to do in this case, again, this is a test environment. I'm going to open up terminal uh, right here because I'm going to do the installation from there. <coughs> and once I have my terminal opened, I am going to do sudo uh, install. I'm going to install Docker. I'm going to say yes, this is going to be a quick process, but to make the video easier, 
if it takes longer than just a few seconds I'll pause it and I'll come back to it it says 84 percent so let's just wait for that perfect as you could see it was uh, rather quick and then I am going to uh, enable my docker for openvas I'm going to be running that on 443, which is my HTTPS. And I have to specify the Docker that I want to run. And probably I mistyped something right here. So let me go back. right here is my mistake so let me do it again okay I have another issue what is that okay it says access denied for 443 and the reason for that is because I didn't specify that that is the port so I have to do minus P and I'm gonna leave these instructions in the description of the video so it'll be easier for you to do the copy and paste instead of typing as I've been doing this. Okay, so this is going to take um, maybe a minute. So I'm going to pause the video and, and I'll come back to it once it's done. Okay, so I am back. The installation has successfully finished. Uh, it took about five minutes for me to or for the installation to complete. Um, and it was smoothless. So what we're going to do now, once we we have the installation, we're going to access OpenVAS. So let me open up a web browser, uh, open up a new tab, and you're going to access that on your local host, and that's 127.0.1. And as you can imagine, uh, you are going to get a certificate error uh, saying that it's not trusted, but I know what I'm accessing, right? Always as a best practice, don't access or any anything that gives you a certificate error unless you know what you are accessing. So I'm just going to accept the risk and continue. Uh, the default username and password is admin. admin. Uh, do you want to save never save and the first time that you access this it's going to take a little bit longer than usual and not only that because i am running openvast on a virtual environment with low resources it's going to be slow so if you're going to be doing this in a production environment and you're going to be using this version of openvast which is the open source make sure that you have a system that has more resources to handle uh, the uh, required performance so i'm just gonna i'm gonna pause the video here until i successfully log in and i'll come back to it okay so here i am again as you could see i have successfully logged in to uh to openvas and it just shows me uh the the mvt severity based on the uh CVEs that it has access to and the information I haven't run any scanned yet. So one of the first things that you would like to do if you want to is uh, change the password. You know, as you could see, the password, it, the, the default password is admin. So um, you can go to users and then that's going to show you the users down here. And then you can just click on the edit and change the password. And there are a lot of settings. We're not going to have time to cover them now, but it is very intuitive and you will be able to figure it out. And I'll create a video later with to go deeper into the configurations and, and the different options. But right now, if you would like to run a scan, right, uh, you would go to the scans tab, tasks, 
and you can follow the wizard it is going to walk you through a process to do that so i'm going to wait for this to uh, finish and i'm going to click on the uh, magic wand and as you can see i have a new task or a new wizard and right here is where you would specify the host or host that you would like to run the scan on so in this case i'm going to run the scan and again this is my test network and whatever i'm doing here is not going to affect any devices in a production environment so i'm going to run this on my network but i highly advise advised you against that in a production environment unless you know what the effect of running the scan is going to have on the performance of your network you could literally crash the network or some services or connections if you run the scan without thinking much about what you are doing so i'm going to do 172 hold on and this is again this is my test network and if you are doing this in a production environment i would again i'm going to say this one more time don't run this can on an entire network unless you know what kind of effect it is going to do or it is going to have on your on your uh, servers and services if you run a scan on a, on a busy network you may create a uh, denial of service on yourself and right? nobody wants that so this is just again for testing purposes uh, and this is my test network i know that nothing is going to be affected here i'm not going to crash or break anything so i'm just going to click on start scan and because i am running this on my network and it's going to take some time for that to run i will pause the video and i'll come back once the results are done as you could see here let me just cover one or two things before i pause the video as you could see here, you can see the status of the scan. It says that it has been requested. And here it is, and it's going to show you what you are scanning. Once it starts scanning, you can go, now right now it's at 1%, right? Even at 1%, you could go to the uh, re, uh, results section. And if anything is discover it'll be the it'll be displayed there this is gonna take some time and again I'm running this on a test environment on a virtual machine and it is slow so this may very well take in my test environment a couple of hours so I'll pause the video then I'll come back at a later time uh, for uh, this uh, to go over the results okay so here i am back to it it as you can see the status is at 60 percent of the scan but as i mentioned to you earlier even if it is at a low percentage let's say one to five percent and it has detected anything it is going to uh, show you the uh, results so if you go to results you can start seeing what has been what has been discovered so far and as you could see it has already detected uh, some vulnerabilities and it's gonna list the uh, vulnerabilities so let me do one more thing here as you could see the refresh um, screen is every 30 seconds i'm gonna change that to five minutes uh, it is kind of annoying that thing refreshing uh, so quickly <laughs> now as the scan continues this is gonna add more vulnerabilities to it and as you could see for instance i have a severity of five if i click on the vulnerability it is gonna uh, tell you what the vulnerability 
uh, is. So let's see. So as you could see right here, I'm just going to show you uh, this is uh, a routine report, uh, weak cell TLS, and it's going to show you information about it. Now, what are the takeaways from this, at least from this video right now? Number one, when you're looking at the results of a vulnerability scanning, it doesn't mean that everything that is in the report is correct. There may be a lot of false positives in these scans, and hopefully not false negatives, right? Uh, they won't be detected. But this is information that you are going to receive and information you are going to have that depending on the information, you are going to decide to take actions or not. Uh, if I go back here and I know that I'm having an SLTLS, um, you know, like weak cipher, do I want to uh, resolve that or are you going to assume the risk, absorb the risk for that because you know that the chances of that vulnerability being exploited are low. So that's what you have to determine as a security engineer within your network when you're doing this. Another thing that you may want to do once you see the vulnerabilities in your system, you can go over to the exploitable database to determine whether there are known exploits for that vulnerability. And if you know that there are known exploit for the vulnerability, that's going to take a higher priority um, for you to patch, to take care of your network instead of the lower priorities, right? Because you may get a lot of these SSL TLS, especially if you have all these uh, network devices, uh, for instance, printers, scanners, or if you have cameras or anything else that don't have a valid certificate or if they have um, if they have uh, HTTP open, you know, like it's little things that you can go there and close uh, HTTP port 80 and leave uh, 443, but you don't want to, you don't feel the need to uh, install a new certificate or a valid certificate on all of these systems. So you have to decide. So ha running a vulnerability scan is just simply providing information for you to analyze and decide what to do. If you do this, you are not protecting your networking in any ways. You are just collecting information and that's part of the information security aspect and the cybersecurity aspect of you running your organization. So I am going to pause the video here. Uh, as you could see, this is going to keep populating. If you go to a scan dashboard, uh, this is going to, you know, keep showing more information. You see, it's going to start populating uh, what what is being discovered and it's going to expand. So um, I will create another video to go into more details once we have a successful scan. Uh, in, in the system, we can go over and analyze more data. But for now, you could see how you are able to run this from a Docker or container in Ubuntu. It is way simpler to do it that way. I am preparing another video to show you how to do it in Kali Linux or Parrot. So you're going to see the difference. And then you decide which route you would like to use. As always, I hope this information was useful to you. Remember, do not run live scans in your network, in your production networks, unless you know the effect it is going to have on the performance of the network. Just always keep that in mind because we've seen way too many issues with running scans. If you found this information useful, please click on the like button, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel so you'll get notified of future videos. I will talk to you on the next video. Have a great day. Bye.